We're going to have a look at indices, which is also called powers, and what happens when we multiply or divide and we have a, a letter with a power next to it. Here we have p to the power 2 multiplied by p to the power 3. What this really means is this p squared of p to the power 2 means p times p, and p cubed or p to the power 3 is p times p times p. Now if we multiply these together we can see we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 p's so that becomes p to the power 5. Now we don't want to always be writing out a big long list of letters so the easy way to do this is just to have a look at the powers. For this power here 2 and this power here 3 and I add them together I get 5 so the answer is p to the power 5 so the easy way of dealing with any indices question that you see when you have something like t to the power 4 times by t to the power 10 the answer is t to the power 14 because all you do is add the powers the main mistake that is made with something like this as people do t to the power 4 times t to the power 10 and get t to the power 40 because they multiply the powers together. This is wrong. This is right. Taking this idea one step further is if you had a sum that looked like this. In this case, what you do is you look at the numbers that are before the letters, the 2 and the 3, and you do it as normal. So 2 times 3 gives me 6. And then you treat the letters the same way as I've just shown you before. So m to the power 4 times m to the power 6 gives me m to the power 10. Now if you had something that looked like this, 3x to the power 3 multiplied by 2x to the power 4, you do exactly the same. 3 times 2 is 6, x to the power 3 times x to the power 4 gives me x to the power 7. See if you can have a go at these. If you manage to get down to the question which is marked as D, then you're doing well. The one that said D is much harder than the rest, but see if you get the same answers as I put down in a second. Now is the time to press pause, get a piece of paper and try having a go. What you needed to remember on the last question here is that when there's no power next to the letter, so you have the Y and the X without a power next to them, they would normally have a 1 here and a 1 here, but we don't write those. So really, you do the working out assuming that there's a 1 there. When we think about dividing when we're using indices, we need to think back to what we did when we multiplied and remember that divide and multiply are the inverse of each other. So when we multiplied, we added the powers. So when we divide, it's just logical that we subtract the powers. So something like this, the answer would be n to the power and 10 take away 2 is 8. Okay, so the answer to this is n equals 8. With the same thought process, we could look at this here, we have 6q to the power 7 divided by 2q to the power 4. And we just think back to what we did before. 6 divided by 2 is 3. q to the power 7, q to the power 4, we do 7, take away 4. So that gives me q to the power 3. And finally, if we look at this last one here, we start off by doing 10 divided by 5, which is 2 p to the power 2 and then a p without the power next to it and we said that as if it was a 1 so 2 take away 1 is 1 but we just write it as p and then finally I've made sure we've got a negative number here 5 take away 6 is negative 1 so it becomes m to the power of negative 1 and that's the answer to this last one here which is quite difficult try getting a piece of paper having a go at these 
and then see if you get the same answers as I do. Hopefully, when you came down to doing the last one, you realise that with a B and the B both to the power 1, when you subtract them, it gives me B to the power 0. One thing you should remember is anything to the power 0 is 1. Okay, so the answer is just 3A.